Hello friends, Loma Linda Longevity class. We are going to talk today about lesson two from the Sabbath school. And we will start with, um, with a brief uh, discussion about one of our studies that we have done in Loma Linda. This was done, uh, as you see here, in um, 2014 couple of years ago, and um, eight years ago, to be more precise. And this was done by Dr. Nu Yen, uh, one of our students in preventive care, who was also a, a clinical psychology um, psychologist um, in our behavioral medical center here. Um, and then uh, he was a student in uh, in, in psychology, he was not a, a graduate, but I was still a student. And then um, what he did is that he got groups that were in the behavioral um, center that need, I believe they have a mental problem. And then he did um, psychotherapy for these guys in two groups. One group was done in the office in, the, in, in a closed, uh, um, office. No, nobody was around. Just, just the the, the, the professional and the, stu and the and the client. And the other, he was uh, able to get to the gym, and then he would go and do uh, the follow. Uh, I mean the the intervention, the same psych psychotherapy, but the 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 guy would be walking with the with the uh, interventionist. And, uh, and then they found that uh, there was a lower uh, uh, amount of depressive symptoms in those that uh, did um, the intervention in the, um, in, in the place that were more open and things like, like a little more exercise. And that's how it worked. You might say, okay, uh, Maybe the restriction of being between four doors, uh, four, four walls, not four doors, four walls was uh, already uh, when you open up. And so the, the, the client will feel, the patient will feel more comfortable to discuss this. And then, but in any case, it was a very interesting uh, uh, study that uh, it showed that there is some benefits of doing something more active than just sitting there and looking at the person one one by one so that that's um that's the benefit what is that related to health exercise has more effect than we can imagine and one of the things that we are uh, that the science is uh, concentrating now is the effect of exercise in the brain and uh, a few years ago, we talked about uh, depression, that uh, exercise would be one of the main, um, uh, say, activities that would, uh, that would affect exercise. And nowadays, we know that uh, it's not just depression, but depression, anxiety, stress, and even diseases like schizophrenia and, and other psychosis and other um, uh, other mental mental problems will benefit, or at least the risk will be lower if a person is uh, exercising. So, uh, and, and also the benefits for mental health. Let's not talk much about the diseases that are more complicated. It is very hard to reverse those diseases, but uh, today we know that if you have more exercise, you your brain functions better you have more memory you have more ability more ability to develop your cognitive uh, um, uh, part of your of your brain development you you are able to to have better emotions you are able to solve more problems uh, mental problems and and you sleep better, that is another issue 
that will improve your mental health and you are more you have more gratitude you are um, you you express more positive emotions than than if you don't exercise so in this case they found that the exercise for depression was good during treatment but uh, this together with um, uh, uh, a lot of evidence that exercise is good for brain, for mental and brain health. Okay, let's talk about now um, our lesson for today, the crucibles that come. Let's have a word of prayer to start this. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your blessings. We thank you for your understanding. We thank you for for being with us. We ask you now that uh, forgive our sins and be with us during the study of your lessons. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, we talk about the crucibles of the shepherds in the uh, past lesson, and today is the crucibles that come. And crucibles, uh, here you see uh, how they purify the metals so you put in a, you put metals in a big pot that um, they can overheat and overheat and overheat and then you might uh, select what metals you want because the metal will melt down and according to their resistance to fire they will melt earlier or later and then we can separate those metals and also put them in the format that you want. Um, and then this purification of the metals is the one that we call crucible. And then what we are applying here is that uh, sometimes some crises that happen to our lives are the way that the Lord uses um, for us to be purified. So there are tons of... Um, of stories in the world uh, uh, of Christianity showing that sometimes a person passes through tribulations and then God gives uh, him or her uh, a life, a better life once they learn that lesson. So it might be that we go to tribulation because we need to learn. But this is not the only cause. We will discuss a little bit about those things in the next slides. So I put here that crucibles could be crises in your life. And then, uh, as we mentioned, as I mentioned before, it can be God's purifying yourself. God's doing something to improve your yourself. But it could be also the influence of Satan's, uh, because Satan is trying to destruct us. Satan's destruction is there, and we are going to discuss this a little bit. And then the Satan's influence in the world. I mean, the world as it is, is not perfect anymore. And um, there is a lot of things that are not working well. In fact, there is another, uh, a lot of things that are working very badly. So animals have been extincted. Um, food is contaminated, soil is contaminated, the dirt, the earth is contaminated, the air is contaminated, the water is contaminated. So, and the minds of people are contaminated. So we just came from a, a Fourth of July celebration of the independence in this country, and a guy was killing uh, children and um, adults and whoever in Chicago, I mean, this uh, 4th of July. So isn't that crazy what is happening? And this is because uh, of Satan's influence in the world. I don't have any doubts about that. Okay, some other crucibles are because of the sake of, uh, of Christ, because of us. Uh, you are suffering because you accept Jesus Christ. And this is something that we should um, accept as something that uh, we are feeling the same as Jesus Christ felt when he was here. He was here to bring health, to bring salvation, to bring more hope, and uh, ended up being killed, being, being uh, uh, put on, 
on the prison and and and, and ritualize and and so, and so. Another lesson that we are going to talk is sometimes God allows those crises for us not to get and see that I am the one, I am the good, I have done that, and I have done that, and that, and that. So we need this crisis to, 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 keep, to keep our humbleness here. Um, another reason for crisis would be our own faults. And we will discuss this during this, uh, this, because this, this slides. Sometimes we commit mistakes and this will bring us, uh, behind us a series of consequences because our, of our own mistakes. So we try to blame someone else, but the, 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 the thing is with us. Who does not um, live and have crises in life? I remember the first year I came to the United States, I bought a Mazda 626, my first car in the United States. And I only have uh, that car for a few months because someone stole the car and then took all the parts that they want and then transformed that car in ashes, practically. They destroyed, they put fire, destroy everything. And I didn't have insurance, so I lost the car. And it was terrible because I was just arriving in the United States. If I knew that we had a problem here with, uh, with thieves, I would have put chains and clubs and making and, and pay for the insurance and everything because I come from, I came from Brazil. I know what is that, uh, that happened there in terms of uh, stealing cars. And, and, and I was never, uh, no cars of me were stolen during my, what, 40 years living in Brazil, 40, almost 50 years. And then in the first months in the United States, they stole my car. That was messed up. And then this stayed with me for a long time. I mean, why is that, Lord? Why did it happen to me? But then um, one week after they stole our car, we were called by the lady that works in Loma Linda University Church. And then she said, I heard that your car was stolen. I say, yeah. And I heard that you don't have insurance for that. And I said, yes. And then uh, I, she said, I found, and this was, um, I can mention her name, Eddie Tarango, because she was, she, she is dead now, but she was a good friend of me, a, a real, sincere Christian person that helped us a lot during these uh, five years, during these five, uh, for first, first years in America. So she said, I found a doctor here in Loma Linda, doctor is small, that um, he will give you a car. And, say, and I told her, what? I never heard such a thing. Yeah, she, she, he, will, he will give you a car. And then she said, um, just come here in the office on, on that day and so. And then uh, I was remembering, well, whatever it was the let told me is that you just rely on me. And I have my servants here on earth and they will help you. So they gave me that four Granada, Dr. Small, who is also um, deceased and was a great person, small in the name, but he was a big person and with a big heart. And then, um, and then he, he gave me that car and then uh, he gave me some instructions. And I, I think the car on that time had uh, 70,000 miles and I put 50,000 more miles on that car. My kids learned how to drive on that. I went to Yosemite with that car. I went to Mexico with that car. And um, fortunately on that time, the gas was less than $1 per gallon. And um, if I had this car today, it would be almost impossible to drive around with, uh, with $6 per gallon as it is now. Anyways, but uh, God gave us that, um, 
I mean, God allow us to have that crisis, price of uh, that, that crucible. But He gave the answer. He gave the the solution and and and, and right away. So crucibles for Christians. Beloved, do not think it is strange concerning the fury trial which is to try you, as though some uh, strange thing happened to you. So difficulties um, will, arou- will, will arise. So don't think that um, life, some people think, well, I accept Jesus Christ and my life was... Uh, in Brazil, we call a, more, a sea of roses. A sea of roses. That means that uh, there is no problem at all. But uh, in fact, when you accept Jesus Christ, you might have a pressure from your family, from your work, from your community, from your neighbors, from your siblings, from your uh, children, from your parents, well, whoever. But it's going to be a pressure somehow. And we have to learn, we have to learn that this is happening. That uh, being with Jesus Christ is is something that will uh, happen when we, we accept him, we will have trials. Why? One of the reasons is because of Satan. Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, adversary, the devil, walks about like a a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. I'm not sure if you have seen a roaring lion. I have seen in the museum, uh, sorry, in the zoo, in the zoo, uh, I've seen roaring lions, but I don't want to see them in real life because this is really scary. So, but this is even scarier than that is to see that Satan is an active and real enemy. He wants to cause damage. His work is palpable all around us with suffering, death, immorality, and falsehood. He is the one that might be... um, affecting us so negatively and providing us with all sorts of things that we, um, that we, to destroy us. Satan knows that he is, he has been already defeated. And then he is trying to, to defeat as many people as he can. And then to destroy God and uh, to destroy the image of God that we are made of. In terms of uh, crucibles of Satan, one thing is important. As Satan is like this uh, lion uh, trying to devour us, we have to be we have to be aware of this situation and not expose ourselves to the temptations. And not to expose ourselves from for, for the situation and activities. And I put here, sometimes the environments will affect us. Habits will affect us. Friends, relationship, activities will lead us to commit mistakes. And sometimes we have those activities and we say, well, what is the problem? I mean, I, I'm not going to go in that direction. And then we start going and going and going, and uh, and that's uh, what happened. That's the main point uh, that um, the main point um, with alcohol that I mentioned. If a person if a person is addicted to alcohol and then wants to uh, find a job serving alcohol in a bar, that's not a that's not a, a good idea, and so. You better find another uh, job in the post office or so, but not in a bar. I mean, you are looking, you are asking for temptation, and that's not a good uh, a good point. So is that not a good idea? I would say. 
Another point is that um, if you have alcohol in your family, as I have, why am I going to drink socially alcohol? Because it might be a matter of time and I become alcohol an alcoholic. So what 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 am I what am I going to do? Um, is is a matter of a, a decision for myself. So if I if I am exposed to my myself to something. I am exposing myself to a crucible, to, to a crisis. And I can explain that my, my son, my uncle, um, Uncle Louis. Uncle Louis started, uh, uh, well, I, I believe he left the church uh, uh, when he was young and then uh, got a girlfriend and started drinking. And uh, barely he knew that um, drinking was, um, it was, a poison that will, would kill his life, and and nothing was more right or more wrong than than that decision. Sooner he became an alcoholic, and he was the earliest uh, from my um, mother's um, siblings to die. I think he was on his sixties or so and he died with um, an amputation on the leg because he had uh, had another amputation one year before and he was a smoker, a drinker and, uh, and uh, in the second amputation he could not handle it and he died. So you might say, oh, that's a tragic story. Well, I'm just saying that sometimes I see, at least in my life and my li in the life of my family, that we bring some of these destructions to us when we try to do our ways and don't consider God, um, God's ways or God's direction to our lives. Crucibles of sin. For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who suppress the truth in unrighteousness. Another point here is what I mentioned in the beginning. Sometimes we stop thinking about God. We trust in our own wisdom. We, we start doing something and then uh, and then God let us to do that. And then when we are in real trouble, um, we we try to come back. And the Lord can forgive you once you come back, but uh, the consequences are very um, are very complicated for for God to to fix. Like I have another uncle who was an alcoholic. And then um, he, he started with the same pathway, he started drinking and drinking a little bit, and all of a sudden he was an alcoholic. And uh, this guy was the one that never, never stopped going to the church, at least in the, in the beginning. And sometimes um, he was a professor of the same type of class that I'm teaching now. So my uncle used to be a professor. And he would drink, get drunk, and then pass the Sabbath school lesson. Can you believe that? <laughs> uh, some people think that alcohol will, will inspire you. But I don't believe on that, and I am not defending my uncle. Um, but uh, think about the consequences that you cannot escape. His daughter, because of his behavior, his daughter became an alcoholic. And then she was an alcoholic and she started smoking. And then the smoking and alcohol, two bad facts, two bad factors in her life. And then she was diagnosed with, uh, with um, lung cancer. She was about my age, maybe a few years older than me. And then when she was on her 40s or so, boom, died with lung cancer. Can you believe that? And who is to blame with that? Of course, she might continue, she might adopt me. But she she came back. She Before she died, before she was diagnosed with cancer, 
she stopped drinking, she stopped smoking, she was back to the church. So that's the point. God forgave her, but the consequences were there. And then and then she died. One will say, okay, she died anyways. So what is the matter to accept God in, in, in her life if she will die anyways? Well, uh, with God, we have the hopes of the second the second life, the second coming of Jesus Christ to provide us um, a life that we that we uh, know is going to be forever. That's the point. Crucibles for protection. So sometimes God will allow us to have some uh, crises in our lives or some missing things in our lives for us to learn. To learn what? Well, to learn is not the same as the same concept that we had in the beginning. It's not God purifying us, but God maintaining a situation for us to not be, lead, be led to pride. And lest I should be exalted above measure by the abundance of the revelations, a thorn in the flesh was given to me, a messenger of Satan to buffet me, lest I be exalted above, above measure. Sometimes when you get a little more influence, when you get a position, when you get things, you think that you are the one, that you have done that, that you uh, did that or did the other things. And sometimes this will lead to, to proud, to, to, to pride and to be pride and to exalt yourself. And sometimes will make you to know that you are the only one. In fact, we have to, sometimes God allows us for that, for us not to be, to be, be egotist, to be selfish. I put something like that. What would that be for us? What would that situation be for us if God allows us to have those uh, Thorn on the flesh. Um, for sometimes, uh, what, what would that be? It could be a physical thing, but then could be something that you need a response from from your prayers, and God does not show you. You need a, a miracle. You need a, an intervention, a deliverance. You need to make a plan, and, and things don't not happen. You need a promotion, you need, a, you need more money, you need a new blessing, you need a new church, you need whatever it is and things don't go. And then you start complaining, you start uh, being depressed and discouraged. But uh, you should not, because my, um, my grace is enough for you. That's what God told Paul. Paul probably had an eyesight problem, and he wants God to deliver him from that that he would perfect. But uh, God kept kept this uh, handicap for him, only for him to learn to depend on the Lord, and to learn that those things are temporary. And then uh, one day we will live uh, with the Lord forever. We don't have to need to work to worry much. Well, my health coach experience was something like was something like that. I, I had, I have to confess uh, for this is for my students this lecture, but I did three times the exam for health coaching, and in the two first time I was I simply I simply did not pass, and I and and, and the difference was like. A, I need to have 360 points, and I have 320 points. And some of you would say, "Well, why didn't you appeal and then review your your points?" And well, no, 
Uh, one of my difficulties was that uh, I, I came to health coaching with a mentality of a physician. A physician make a diagnose and, and make a prescription after the diagnose. A health coach does not make any diagnose and does not write any prescription, but he goes around and, and, and explore the client in such a way that um, he, was, he is going to work in, in a way to, uh, to empower the, the, the clients to make their own changes and, and to make their own decisions. So it's a completely different setting. But in any case, I was praying, Lord, why and I don't pass? I mean, in the School of Public Health, we need two faculties to have the, the degree, and I didn't pass. And one time I said, you know what? I'm not going to do this test anymore. And then I gave up. And then I talked to my friends and I said, you know what? Now is your turn to do. Now, there is another friend that uh, was with me. And then uh, I told him, now is your turn. Because I, 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 I didn't pass two times. I was reproved. So now you try it and let's see. If you pass, I don't need to do that. And then he said, no, it's not like that. I mean, you know what is uh, to be a health coach. I know you know because you have been with us here. And we have dealt with these issues. I mean, we, the problem is this medical stuff. So get rid of that and then try again. And, and you will su succeed. And he mentioned about a colleague of him that was a psychologist that has done the, the well, I'm not, I don't know if it was psychology or, or counselor, uh, but uh, he has done the test for five times and was rejected uh, all the time along. And he, until he, he got, finally he passed. And then uh, the guy told me, well, my friend told me a, um, no, I have to use the health coaching here. You, you should not give up on this because you think it's the last one because it's just a learning process. Don't, rem don't forget that. It's a learning process. You, you did that. So today I did the third time and I passed. And then, uh, and then today I can help. I can help you guys doing the first time. And I am the only one here in this school that can help people that have uh, not passed two times or three times. Isn't that? It's not my my pride. Okay, don't don't take me wrong. I I, I don't have a proud I I don't have uh, proud of being um, I don't have pride of uh, re being rejected two times. I mean, this is really messed up what happened, but. But uh, making right from wrong, uh, or or taking lessons from what you um, what you pass, will help you to help other people. And we don't talk about that. But um, I have uh, I have students that came to me now, and I have one of my students that uh, she uh, didn't pass the first time, and she was uh, and she was depressed, and she was also she was a medical doctor, and I told her, hey. I had the experience and I know what you have to do. So concentrate on this and this, do this and that and that and that. Boom. Well, she did the test. I don't know if she passed it or not yet because she does not have the results yet. But in any case, he gave me the satisfaction of uh, that crucible that passed in my life helped me to help other people. So this is the last slide on this uh, on this class. Those who hold fast their faith unto the end will come forth from the furnace of trial as fine gold seven times purified. When in trouble, remember that faith tried in the furnace of affliction is more precious than gold tried in uh, tried with fire. So. The advice here is that trust in the Lord. The advice here is that if you have crisis, put the crisis on, on the Lord's hands. Will he solve? Yes. But not always. He will answer that according to what we want, what I want. So 
we should put in the hands of the Lord and let it go as it is. I remember one case of a um, cancer person um, in Japan. He was a pastor in a church and then he was diagnosed with a terminal cancer. And uh, it was a throat cancer and he was a preacher. And then he simply did like that. I am grateful for my life so far. I have children, I have family, I'm happy, I have a church, I have preached the gospel, I don't have anything to complain. If God decides to take my life now, boom, he takes. If he decides that I'm going to stay, much better, but he's in his hands. And uh, he did that with, uh, with uh, so uh, much conviction that he was not he was not pressured to have um, a suppression of his immune system because many people when they are diagnosed with cancer they go oh my and then they got into discouragement depression and then uh, the immune system also uh, gets into the, the same uh, mood and then uh, he decided to continue preaching the gospel until he could uh, no longer talk because the cancer was in his throat. And then he continued doing the same activities and then consider if God wants me to go, it's about time to go. And that's what he did. And guess what? He died with a car accident 30 or 20 or 30 years after that. Not with the cancer. The cancer disappeared. So, isn't that something? But uh, in any case, I know many other cases that uh, they pray and pray and pray and pray and the cancer was not going away. Well, it's in God's hands. God's know better than me. But maybe, maybe they were so concerned about their life, of losing their lives, that um, the immune system was kind of compress it and and, 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 and and in that case it was it was um, it was but remember one thing even if a person dies he will live because if he is with the Lord the Lord will make this person life live again the Lord will resurrect this person to an eternal life Okay, guys, thank you very much. Let's finish with another word of prayer. Heavenly Father, thank you for this lesson. And when things happen to our lives, give us uh, the strength to overcome. Give us the peace to, to overpass the situations and that we can understand what is happening. But if you don't understand, the main thing is that we put our lives in your hands. Guide us, protect us, and Lead us to eternal life. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.